We're talking bowl eligibility, uh, why it matters, and are the Badgers going to get there this year? Um, all that and more on today's Locked On Badgers. Let's go. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, what's going on, uh, everybody? I am Ryan Herrings, your host, the Locked On Badgers, your team every single day. I uh, really appreciate everybody tuning in. And if you're on the pod, if you're on YouTube, however you're finding this show, really, really do appreciate all the support as we continue to build up this community. And who would have thought we would be here, right? Uh, certainly not me. Certainly not a lot of the people we've had on the show. Certainly not a lot of people in the media, uh, who many of whom picked the Badgers to win the Big Ten West, not just Wisconsin media. You know, we're talking bowl eligibility, and quite frankly, are the Badgers going to get there? And wow, what a conversation to be having as Wisconsin fan. For Listen, this speaks to what I've talked about in the offseason, that we have been spoiled as Badger fans from a football standpoint, football and basketball standpoint. Um, you know, so many times we've we've been at this point in the year as Badger fans, and we've, we've seen other programs talk about how they're going to get bowl eligible. And it's always been kind of like, uh, oh, that's cute. Gosh, that. How, how tough it must be just to play to try to be bowl eligible. Like it's been our birthright for a while to go to, go to at least bowl games. And I don't know if we'll do it this year. I, I don't know, but it matters. Like getting to the bowl game matters. It, it's, it helps. It's important. Um, you know, and it, it matters for a couple of reasons, which we're going to talk about. We're, we're going to start with why it matters, why Wisconsin still needs to try to get to that bowl game. And then we're going to get into how are they going to get there, um, if they're going to get there. So let's start here. Uh, people may, may or may not know this. The Badgers have the third longest active bowl streak in the country. Third. In the country, right? It goes Georgia, Oklahoma, Wisconsin. Some schools named Alabama and Clemson are right behind us. So, listen, does that matter, matter? Is it? it no, but it kind of does because it's really cool. And just as a fan, like part of being a fan is the cool things that you can be proud of, of your program. Going to 20 straight bowl games is pretty awesome. Um, you know, having the third longest bowl streak, not only can you sell that to recruits, you, you can sell that on the recruiting trail. That is a tangible bit of evidence that says we are really good at football. We have consistent winning teams, uh, but it's really cool. I mean, listen, again, it, these are the, the top five names. It's Georgia, Oklahoma, Wisconsin, Alabama, and Clemson. That. There's four blue bloods in Wisconsin right there. Um, that's pretty darn cool. So just keeping that streak going, you know how Nebraska has their sellout streak. And, you know, even, even if it means we go to like a, a cheesy bowl, the streak continues. It's kind of cool. It's neat. And, Wisconsin, you know, it, that's on the line this year. It's also historically, uh, if you go into 20 straight bowl games, it's the eighth longest streak in the history of college football. After this year, it'll be the eighth longest streak. We'll pass LSU after this year, I believe it is, if we get to uh, 21, if we make another bowl game. Like in the historical context of college football, what Wisconsin is doing, it's one of the 10 longest streaks in the history of the sport. You know, that that matters. It's cool. It's unique. It's fun. So just from that aspect, that, that doesn't do anything in the big picture of the health, the holistic health of the program. But I think it's a really kind of cool, fun, unique thing that would be awesome to keep going. Right now, let's talk about why else it matters. Right, <clears throat> it matters primarily because you get extra practices. You get extra practices if you go to bowl games. And what have we talked about? Even when, even when the season wasn't kind of derailing, right? At, in the beginning of the year, in the off season, preseason previews, uh, we've talked about the youth on this team, the youth on the offensive line, the youth at receiver, the youth on on the in the linebacking core, the youth at cornerback, et cetera, et cetera, the youth at outside linebacker. This is a young team. Getting those extra practices really matters. Like it's a big deal. And you know, the number that's always thrown out is 15 practices, but it does, it's not actually necessarily exactly 15 extra practices you get. You can kind of set how many. Um, it's there's a little bit of gray area there, but that's a lot of extra developmental time for younger players, for um, younger players to take a step up, to get reps for your backup quarterback, Miles Burkett, who's going to need them, to get reps for your young offensive tackles, right? Uh, it's a lot of reps for your young cornerbacks and safeties, Austin Brown, and Ricardo Holman, Matt Slofi, Al Ashford, Daryl Peterson. I could go on and on. There's so many young dudes on this team. You know, Curtis Neal, um, the inside linebackers, for Pete's sake, you know, there's a lot of players on this team that need those 15 practices. So not only do you keep the bowl streak going, which would be awesome, um, 
but you, but you get those 15 extra practices, 16 extra practices, however many it is. And then the last thing is you can kind of, if you get to a bowl game in a transition year, you can still kind of frame it as a success. It's kind of a momentum builder into the off season, you know, especially Wisconsin under Paul Chris, listen, Paul Chris was six and one in bowl games, you know, so having that momentum going into the off season, having that momentum going into signing day, having that momentum building for the next year's recruiting class, you know, keeping that bowl streak going, getting those extra practices, like all of that matters. It matters for uh, the trajectory of the program. It matters for the development of the younger players. It gives you kind of a springboard into the off season. It allows you to evaluate, you know, your coaches a little bit more who, by the way, we've talked about are all kind of auditioning for, for jobs. So um, yeah, I, it's not going to be easy. You know, we're going to get into that next, but it matters. Even again, I don't want to, it's easier than ever to make bowls now, right? We know that it, you, you have to win six games, even in some weird cases, a five win team can get in there, but you basically have to win six games. So it's not like a giant barometer, but winning six games means that, you know, you're still winning a couple of big 10 games down the stretch. Like you're, you're able to finish with some momentum. It means quite frankly, that the wheels don't fall off. Right. It means that the wheels didn't completely fall off of this year if you're still able to to get to a bowl game. And it's not going to be a prestigious one. Nobody in the national media is going to look and say, ah, a Badger team in that really great bowl game did all this and that. No, but it, it still matters. It's important to finish the season correctly. It's important for the young players to build those reps. And it's important to get the extra extra um, practices. So, yeah, that's got to be the goal of the season. And I think you have to reframe goals at this point because that's where we're at. You know, the Big Ten West is gone. I mean, even before last weekend, it was, um, I would say, slim, but the chance was there. That's gone now. All the goals that were set up for the season, team before the year are gone. None of those, the Big Ten West, the Big Ten title, a big bowl game, none of that can happen. But that doesn't mean it can be, it doesn't mean it has to be a complete failure either. Like you can still salvage this thing and get something out of it. So that is why the bowl is so important. That's why getting bowl eligible is so important. That's why these last um, five games, quite frankly, are so important to this program. Build some momentum, get the coaches going, get extra practices. All right, coming up, we're going to talk about um, actually go through the, the last chunk of this schedule and how likely is it that we're going to be able to get to those six games, who's left, who we would be favored against, and quite frankly, who will we not be favored against. That's coming up next on Locked On Badgers. But first, I have a great, uh, great friend of the show, something that I use, Simply Safe Security. Um, the numbers don't lie. In the last decade, over 4 million people have chosen Simply Safe Home Security to protect their home. You don't earn the trust of that many people without doing something right. At Simply Safe, safety is the only thing that matters. I know because I use Simply Safe in my home. They protect you with cutting edge security technology powered by 24 7 monitoring uh, service that will always have your back. Let me tell you why I love Simply Safe. Okay, because occasionally I have a family and occasionally I have business travel. I have to leave. And Simply Safe gives me the peace of mind to be able to go and do what I need to do and know my family's protected. It gives my wife the peace of mind that I can go do those things and she's protected. The kids are protected. We installed everything ourselves. It's incredibly easy to use. No wires, no cables. You put sensors on doors and windows DIY without any DIY skills. It protects our family. It protects what's most important to us. And it's something we've used for a bunch of years. I love Simply Safe. I love what we have in our, our home and in our system. And it's again, gives us peace of mind and, for the price, you, you can't put a price on peace of mind. Uh, with 24-7 professional monitoring, Simply Safe's agents call you the moment a threat is detected. Dispatch police or first responders in an emergency, even if you're not home or can't be reached. It is the best way to protect your home and give yourself that peace of mind. Uh, customize the perfect system for your home in just a few minutes at simplysafe.com slash lockdown college. Save 20% on your Simply Safe security system when you sign up for an interactive monitoring monitoring plan. Get your first month free, simplysafe.com slash lockdown college. There is no safe like Simply Safe. I want to thank everybody for tuning in uh, to Lockdown Badgers, continuing to make this your show every day, your team every day. Um, and we're going to continue bringing the content, football and basketball. I do, if you guys enjoy it, uh, take a second, subscribe to the show. It's one of the best ways to support us. Um, I really, really do appreciate it as we continue to build the community. All right, let's look at it. So the Badgers are three and three, right? We got three wins in the back pocket. Um, we need to get to six, right? The Badgers need to get to six wins. So how how do we get to six wins? How likely is it? You know, are we going to be favored in any games the rest of the year? Um, and let's, honestly, are we going to be favored in any games uh, the rest of the year? Uh, Badgers are three and four. I said three and three. I meant three and four, sorry. 
So we need three more wins. Are we going to get them? Uh, let's start here. We got Purdue coming up this weekend. Okay. It's a home game. Jim Leonard's first home game, which is kind of cool. It's unique. Um, Purdue's five and two. They have the second best passing offense in the Big Ten. Aiden O'Connell's a dude. Ah, you know, that's a tough one. You know, it's first of all, this Purdue game, because we got to buy next week. Okay. So the Purdue game really is one of the most important games for the rest of the year. Because if you can get a win going into the bye, that bye game, that bye week is needed. A lot of injured players on the Badgers. And quite frankly, with the coaching transition, the injuries, the disappointing season, this team needs a reset. They needed a week to get healthy, a week to get back on track. If you can find a way at home to get past a Purdue team that you've owned over the last 15 years, you have owned Purdue. If you can find a way to get through that team with a win, go to 500 into the bye week, um, you're feeling a lot better. Um, if you don't, you really set yourself up for a tough last stretch of the schedule where you have to play really good ball. So you have Purdue coming out of the bye, you get Maryland. Maryland's five and two right now, too. Also a really good passing game. You know, Tagovola is the third best passer in the Big Ten, I think, statistically. Maryland has some weapons on the outside. They have a big, deep play receiver. That's not going to be easy. It's another home game, right? So your next two games are at home against Purdue and Maryland. Teams that, listen, those are teams that traditionally aren't on the Wisconsin tier, but this year, Wisconsin's just not that good. You know, those those aren't gimme games. In fact, um, on a neutral field, both Purdue and Maryland will be favored. So uh, maybe in Madison, they're kind of pick them games, you know, um, but both those teams have played better this year. Wisconsin does get them at home, but how, how you know, how good is that home environment going to be for a Badgers team that has, has not played that well? And quite frankly, for, for Wisconsin home field advantage, that hasn't been as good as you see in some other spots, right? So those are two tough games. And then you're going to go to at Iowa, at Nebraska, and then finish it off with Minnesota. So again, you got to win three of those, right? Purdue, Maryland at home, Iowa, Nebraska on the road, home, Minnesota. You got to win three. So what's likely here? I, I think you beat Purdue. Um, I have no real reason to say that. I just think at home before a bye, uh, it's such a make or break spot. I, I think you can beat Purdue. I think you're probably going to split Purdue, Maryland. I actually, um, I think you lose it. I think you lose to Iowa and Kinnick. So that's already two losses with one win. Nebraska has been playing better under their interim coach. I just don't know. Like I'm going through these games and I'm really trying, but this team is so inconsistent and so undisciplined that I have a hard time saying we beat any of these teams. No, none of these teams are juggernauts. Wisconsin could beat any one of these teams and lose to any one of these teams, right? Um, so what's the most likely record? Three home games, two road games. I think three and two is probably best case. Um, I think like one and four wouldn't shock me. Listen, if they won every game or lost every game, I'd be stunned. I don't think they're going to lose every game left on the schedule. That That's not going to happen. Um, I don't want people to freak out and, and overreact. I also don't think they're going to win every game on the rest of the schedule. Like this team's not good enough to do that. So I don't know. Let me know in the comments what you think. I'm really struggling to make picks here because quite frankly, I mean, these, all these, first of all, all these teams are chaotic in the big 10 West. Let's start there. Right. We talk about Wisconsin's chaotic. Uh, Nebraska's already fired their head coach before Wisconsin did. Iowa has maybe the worst offense in modern college football history. Okay, but their defense is great. What do you do there? Purdue and Maryland have, I mean, Purdue's won four straight. They almost beat Penn State in the opening game, uh, but they also lost to Syracuse in a weird game. I don't know. Um, Maryland has, has explosive playmakers. It's All these games are chaotic. Minnesota came out of the gate really, really strong, and the last couple weeks, the wheels have fallen off for them. You know, last week against Illinois, Tanner Morgan looked like a JV quarterback. He looked like the Tanner Morgan of of – last year you know not the, not the good tanner morgan so he was 4 12 i'm rambling a little bit here but it's this is so hard to pick because all these teams are flavors of of hot messes right all of them are so i mean just getting three home games by two road games probably matters that's probably a big deal i think they beat minnesota by the way i stick with that prediction i think home game to end the year in a game that the badgers may need to get bowl eligible bowl eligible by the way it's a revenge spot for them to get the ax back. I think there are still a lot of there are there's a lot of players on this team that still give a crap. I, I know that for a fact. 
And I think getting that last game at home, getting the ax back, playing in Madison with potentially a chance to go to a bowl game on the line, I think they win that one. I think they probably split Maryland-Purdue. Um, so that's two wins right there with a loss. And I could see them splitting Nebraska-Iowa, the two roadies. So that's three and two. Um, which which um, team they win and lose to in those splits I referenced, I don't really know. I think it's really hard to call. You know, so – I think at the end of the day, they go three and two down the stretch. That might be optimistic, but people also have to remember how chaotically bad some of these teams are playing down the stretch are. You know, um, Minnesota, again, looks like the wheels are falling off there. Nebraska's on their interim coach. Iowa's offense is terrible. Now, all these same things you can say about Wisconsin. Like, if I'm an Iowa podcast right now, I'm saying Wisconsin, the wheels are falling off. Interim coach, inconsistent. They can't stop, you know, passing games. You know, we have the same inconsistent questions as well. So, you know, if there's five games that are all coin flips, you're probably going two and three or three or two. And we get three home games. So that's where we're at. I think we go three and two. We finish six and seven. It does get you bowl eligible. It's the bottom tier lowest rung of bowl eligibility. But as I referenced in point one, at this point in the season, the expectations have shifted. Okay. Going six and seven and getting bowl eligible – with where we're at right now is a win because it's going to give you more practice. It's going to help you develop. It's going to give you a little bit of momentum going into next year. And, you know, you can kind of write the ship a little bit. If you know, writing the ship a little bit is kind of a big deal. So I don't know. That's where I have us at. I have us just kind of eking out three and two the rest of the year um, and getting bowl eligible. But let me know in the comments. Maybe I'm overshooting that. It certainly wouldn't shock me if they they go one and four. So, yeah, that's where I'm at. Uh, coming up next, we're going to talk about the goals for the rest of the year. We talked about bowl eligibility, but there's some other things I think for the rest of the year Wisconsin needs to look at. I think there's some other things going on for the rest of the year that, you know, the Badger, Badger fans and the Badger team can kind of circle as things to accomplish and to achieve. So that's coming up next on Locked On Badgers. But first, today's show is brought to you by our good friends over at Bet Online. Bet Online remains your number one source for all of your sports betting needs, information. They do a great job with futures, with live in game betting, and all your sports are there. All your sports are covered at Bet Online, right? You can get bat, uh, baseball, basketball, hockey, NASCAR, esports, um, UFC, golf. It's all there. It's your number one sports betting site covering all sports with sports information and wagering information. And I love the the futures betting that they do, right? If you have a good feel for baseball has been chaotic, right? If you have a feel for who's going to come out of the NL or the AL, bet online is your place to do that. If you have a good feel NBA is about to start up, who's going to win the Western conference, right? Who's going to be the MVP? All of that, those futures are on bet online. They also offer great in game, live in game betting uh, and live uh, casino games, you know, blackjack roulette. It's all there. It's one-stop shopping. There's a reason we use it at Locked On. It is our number one source for all your sports gambling wagering information. Head to Bet Online. Use your mobile device to learn more about the props in action. Bet Online, where the game starts. I want to thank everybody again for tuning in to Locked On Badgers, making this your first listen every single day, your team every single day, and we're here for it. All right. I've talked about it a couple times. we got to reframe expectations, you know, because we came into the season thinking nine wins, ten wins, seven wins as a floor. The over-under was set at 8.5. You know, so all that's gone. You know, all that's gone. We got to reframe expectations at this point. So what are some goals going forward for the rest of this year? How can this year still be successful? What are we shooting for? Uh, from this point forward, what needs to be the targets? I talked about the first one. It's bowl eligibility, right? That's that's the first one. That's a big one. And it's it's accomplished. It's something that can be accomplished. That is there for the taking if this team can clean some stuff up. Let's talk goal number two, beat Minnesota, period. OK, that listen, this season, we're never going to look back at the 2022, 2023 Wisconsin Badgers football team as an epic success. OK, we're not going to look back as with this being one of our favorite Badger football teams to root for or cheer for. OK, there's been some dark moments in this season, but a win against Minnesota would feel so good. OK, for starters, they have the axe that doesn't need to sit across the state lines in PJ Flex closet for another year while he parades it around like it's some 
like personal toy. I don't know if you've seen this. They, they bring, they act like the Minnesota state fair and all these things. And they put it in like this wonky trophy box that isn't even big enough. Cause they don't even really know what to do with the ax, by the way, they've had it so little that they don't even really have a proper feel for how to display it or celebrate it. It's, it's probably getting dinged up and all damaged in their care. I, listen, getting the ax back, beating Minnesota, getting bowl eligible, if we can finish on those notes, again, this is not a successful year, but that would that would blunt a lot of the trauma. It it would it would be a great way to go into the offseason, right? Whether that's with Jim Leonard or whether that's selling the program to some other coach or whatever it is, beating Minnesota, getting that axe back, chopping down goalposts. And quite frankly, guys like Keanu Ben deserve it. Tittman deserves it. You know, Benton could have left. He came back and that dude gives a crap. Uh, straight up, Keanu Benton gives a crap. Him coming back, getting the axe, and chopping down a goalpost, I'm here for that. I am. I'm here for that. I'm here for Isaac Garendo for everything he's put into the program, coming back and chopping down a goalpost, right, in his senior season. I'm here for Tipman doing it. I'm, I'm here for Torchio, the walk-on from California, right, Who who's put a ton into this program, going out with the axe. I'm, that's what I'm here for at this point. Like, this is a disappointing year. Getting the X back, beating Minnesota, getting to six wins to win a bowl game doesn't change the calculus of that. I'm not trying to reframe the equation, but all we can do from this point forward is all we can do from this point forward. And from this point forward, get bowl eligible, beat Minnesota, get the X, beat Iowa. Okay. That though those are my big ones. Those are the rivalries I care about. I care about Minnesota and Iowa. Like Nebraska, we have a trophy. I don't really care about that rivalry for, for a multitude of reasons. Um, they haven't been in the Big Ten long enough. We've owned them. That trophy's wonky. It's forced. Do I want to beat them? Of course, obviously. Uh, but it, that that's not like beating Iowa or beating Minnesota to me. So get bowl eligible, beat Iowa, beat Minnesota. Um, those are real goals that can still happen this year that would matter. They would have tangible effects, at least on my psyche. Um, a couple other ones. Keep continue developing young players, right? Down the stretch, an opportunity to continue getting reps for guys like Holman, getting continue getting reps for guys like Austin Brown, right? Maybe getting Miles Burkett some more reps in situations that make sense if, if those are there. Um, getting reps for the young offensive tackles. Like let's let's see if we can finish off this year and going into next year. Obviously, Riley Mullman's been hurt, which stinks, but is is Trey Wedig and Jack Nelson the offensive tackle duo that we want to go forward with? I think those questions, you know, down the stretch can kind of be answered. How about the outside linebackers? Like, who's going to be the dude that steps up next year? Is it going to be Peterson? Is it going to be TJ Bowlers, Caden Johnson? You know, we haven't got a lot of production from those spots. And the end of the year, the rest of this year, it's a good opportunity to see if those players can start to separate, building momentum going into next year. You know, so I would say continue to develop the young players. Uh, another big goal for this year. You're not punting on the season, but let's start shifting a little bit towards repping out some of the young players where we can, where we can get them developmental time experience. Um, I would love to see the young corners, corners, uh, Austin Brown, those guys, Hunter Wohler, if he gets back, getting work back into the mix, you know, that that's something that can happen. And, and Wisconsin can continue to develop those players um, while beating Minnesota, Iowa, hopefully uh, getting bowl eligible. And the last one is uh, just continue, continued evaluation of the coaching staff, right? That's the last real big goal for the rest of this year get a good feel on what Bobby Ingram's offense looks like. And if it's something that, you know, whether it's Jim Leonard or someone else makes sense in Madison with these pieces, I have no doubt that Bobby Ingram's a super sharp dude. There's zero doubts there. He's well-spoken. Um, that Baltimore Ravens coaching fraternity program, coaching tree is, is really sound. They're not going to let uh, bad coaches in there. So I like Bobby Ingram. I like the, I liked the higher when it happened, but we still got to see if it works. Right. So I think the rest of this year, the goals I kind of have, and what I think makes sense is you get bowl eligible. We talked about that. Beat Minnesota. Get the axe back. Chop down some goalposts for those seniors, right? Send those dudes out on a high note. Beat Iowa. And then let's continue repping out some of the younger players, seeing where those players can be next year as we continue to build the program back. And then I think you you got to take a look at the offense. Take a look at the coaches and see who makes sense to continue going forward with Wisconsin. So that's kind of where I'm at, y'all. Um a bit of a maybe a bit of a rambling show, but to wrap it all up, bowl eligibility is still there. Get bowl eligible. It matters. Continue the streak, get those extra practices. Um 
the five, the games remaining, it's it's a crapshoot. I I don't know. They're all like 50-50 throw up games, you know, dice games. And I think we're gonna. I hope, and maybe this is me being optimistic. I hope we can finish out three and two on those games, get bowl eligible, and then um, let's beat Minnesota, Iowa, get to a bowl game, and see where the coaches stand kind of at the end of the year. So that's where I'm at, y'all. I appreciate everybody listening. If you like the show, please hit the subscribe button. It really does help. Uh, it helps support the show, helps keep us going. Um, on Wisconsin, we're going to talk to you all tomorrow. A bunch more content coming up. Um, a bunch, bunch more content coming up. So look for that. Thank you all for listening, for joining into the show. Really, really do appreciate it. On Wisconsin.